part five. Today we're back with the body. It's been a long time actually since we've been back with this one. And as you can see, it's nicely finished after a shit ton of sanding. And there's a nice bit of grain to play with as well, even though it's two distinctly different types of wood. It's a really nice back stack at all. What we're going to do today is we're going to start the wood staining process, which is a couple of days I think it's going to take. And the first stage, what we're going to do is we're going to clean all this up to make sure there's no rough edges and dust. We're not going to use any fillers or anything like that. We're going to leave it as it is. And we're going to start with a plain black ebony water-based wood dye. And we're going to apply with a nice soft cloth. And we're going to go all over this guitar. We're going to go from head to toe. It is going to go completely black. All the sides, the back, the whole lot. And the reason for this is we're going to use it as the base for a rudimentary burst. So we're going to use it to pull out this wood grain, hopefully make this a little darker and accentuate the lovely bit of wood that we have. Actually, after re-examination of this guitar, it's quite light, but it's actually really, really nicely finished. Well, it is now. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to go black. We can probably leave it for maybe four or five hours. Might even leave it for a day, depending. We're going to do two or three coats of the black, and then we're going to sand it down in the middle here. Sort of teardrop shape. Better to explain it that way. Round like this. And we're going to sort of feather out the sanding as we go, so it'll be dark on the outside, getting brighter and brighter in the middle. With a colour. I'm not going to tell you what the colour is yet, because I haven't mixed it. But I have an idea. The back we're going to kind of do a little bit more plain, but we've got a nicer grain to play with there, so I think we can just go and keep it a bit more simple. Nice. Anyway, it's going to be fun. I've been waiting to do this one. Time lapse. Next. Now then, this is actually coming out really, really nice. It's really accentuating that grain. You can see it gradually sinking in. It's nearly dry as soon as it goes. Not too bad. I say it's like a sponge. This is, but uh, it actually looks pretty good. The back looks really well. You can see on the back actually a perfect example of what needs to be resanded. For example, little high spots here where there must have been a bit of clear coat left on it. But you see the way the two different bits go together. Now it's a proper little wood grain. It's nice, isn't it? Let that dry. Coat number two.
right, so now we've got two coats on. And so the back, I'm going to keep pretty uniform, as you see. And it's come out really nice. You can see that lovely bit of grain going through there. Very nice. This is going, I'm going to sand this back a little bit. And then we're going to do... Uh, I nearly let this colour slip there. I'm not going to do it just yet. Uh, take a little bit more drying. Last coat dried in less than an hour, which is good. Now, this is already dry to the touch. But the front, as you can see, I've started to fade in a rudimentary burst. And so we're going to sand back here when this is dry, because this is dry in the middle here. But you can, this here is where it's going to get dark, and it will saturate a little bit more. So I'm going to go in with the sandpaper and feather this back so it's a nice fade. And then we're going to go all over with the, the colour, which should be fun. It's coming out really, really well. I'm happy with this. Very, very happy. Yeah, so this little oval here is where we're going to start. It's going to get brighter, brighter as it goes into the middle, and then darker as it goes back out. Layer after layer after layer after layer. And we might keep the sides black. What do you think? I quite like that. Hmm. Fun. Next. Right, next thing we're going to do, we're going to get a little bit of this black off and uh, it's dried really nicely, it's more uniform than it was before and you can still see a little mark there but we'll get that out with the sand in and what we're going to do is we're going to try and bring this back a little bit to the, the grain and keep the, the lower points darker so I've got some fine grit, oh, I've got a little bit of, uh, what's this one here? It's 100, it's a bit too heavy. This is 240 or something. That's the 120. We'll go with this. And we'll just do a quick sand back on this one. What I wouldn't give for an old bottle sander. And then, quick hint. Ooh. We've got our colours mixed. Might put a bit of dark into it as well. So we're going to start with the top, we're going to work our way down, keep it nice and even on the back. It's going to take a while. I'm going to go heavier. There we go. we've brought some of that grain back out now it's a little bit rough and ready here but we're going to go back in with a darker color on the edges we wanted this grain you can see it follows here so we can't really do much about these but i kind of like that it's unique that's so good so this is going to be our sort of teardrop shape for our uh, sunburst and then on the back we're going to keep it quite uniform but this grain really came up well on this one nice and softened too uh, before you add any additional grain to this, remember that's how much dust comes off. So I'd actually hoover this, which I think I'm going to do now. So a bit raised here, not too bad. A couple of scratches still from the sanding, but that will come with a bit of character down here, I think. I'm going to leave the sides comparatively black, but I'm going to put a colour of stain over them as well. And what colour are we going to be using, I wonder? How about emerald green? 
Don't worry, there will be more. This is just some green I'm going to darken down. And uh, time old fashioned mixing it with a stick. And we are going to do our first pass in a minute. But the first thing we're going to go back and do is get another edge, particularly on the top with the black. Here we go. Next. Now, now we've got our rough approximation of our uh, sunburst. Uh, we're going to have a uh, good thing about these gloves. They can actually use the blend. It's pretty good. A bit wet finger there because I've been mixing up some very dark emerald green dye. Now this is quite thick stuff. So you have to really dilute it down a bit. It's powder form. And I've mixed in a little bit of black to it as well, and a tiny little bit of brown. I'll show you what it looks like. It'll come out brighter when it's on the cloth. And what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way across the whole body, on the top at least. Just do the top for now. The back can wait. And we're going to do, it's going to start darker in the outsides, but we're going to do the whole thing, and then we're going to go in with some wire wool. And we're going to tear it back, tear it all the way back, all the way back, all the way back, all the way back. The grain's ready to go. You watch this grain pull out of this now. This will be good. Right, we'll do this first pass in real time. <coughs> Bleeding dust. What I was done with sanding. This is going to come out a nice colour. Right, we're going to use a clean cloth for this one. This is going to use for a little bit of uh, blending. That one is just black, soaked through at the moment. Right, here we go. Let's be brave. There's a colour. We start at the top. Nice. Get the whole body in. Now, you can see it's starting to come out now. Look at that grain, isn't it beautiful? And the next one we're going to do, we're going to go even heavier, even thicker. Might even make up a thicker solution of this. Look at that grain coming out there now. This was worth doing. Oh, I'm happy. Very happy. Very satisfied. Over it one more time. This one got loads of it. We're going to soak this now. There we go. Get into all them bits you sanded off. There's actually a nook there which I might have to dye another colour, but it's just a natural flaw in the wood, can't do much about it. Now this is coat one, this one will take a lot longer to dry because it's got less wood underneath it essentially because we've got the original black layer. It'll dry quicker here obviously. That's not looking too horrible is it? And you see the original colours compared to it. Let's do another pass. Oh we've got drips, drips are not good. 
We will use it to our advantage and we will saturate and then mop it off. Just so we can pull it through all the grains. Because what we're going to do after this is we're going to go in with wire wool. Which I had a little test on another piece of wood on. And that's how we're going to get that grain brighter in the middle. But we're not doing that bad. I think this is not too terrible. Look at that. That's all right, isn't it? few dribbles getting all out of the way I'm not using anything other than these lint free cloths I don't want any fibers caught in it you see oh yes I'm glad I went with green Might as well do the sides while we're here because we don't get any drips. Can't wait to do the back because the back's got better grain. already start to see where it's a bit darker than it was before. For example here, the little fingers coming out over the top of this. We might mix a little bit of the green with the black in a minute. And they're different brands, but one's thicker than the other, so. This is what the wire wool process is for at the end anyway. Get as much on as we can on this coat, and we're gonna leave this to dry for a long time. Let the wood soak it all up and then we come in with another coat. Oh, I'm very happy with this. And it smells quite nice, this one does. All that sanding was worthwhile. I'm annoyed about that bit. Can you see it? Not really, maybe it's just me. Basically, it's just a divot that won't go away. I might have to just go in, even like a Sharpie pen, roughly the same color, and dip, put it in. Or I might get it on a cocktail stick or something, a earbud. Happy days. Now, we put the green one down because saturated now we'll take some of it off with this one this is dry I know it looks like that guy from Watchmen but it's dry with a little bit of dark in it will actually help us blend that's what we want to see we want to see the, where the highlighted wood grain is nice and uniform Need some more in here. First coat though, it's already soaking into the wood. If you use this to blend in a little bit, why not? Just do a bit of feathering around here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the wire wool and we're gonna take a little bit here Gonna go into the middle, we're gonna try and get a little bit more of a transition between this piece of wood and this piece of wood. A little bit up here. We haven't got to worry too much about it because there's gonna be a scratch plate over this from here to here. And the bridge is gonna be here and there's gonna be some chrome parts on it. But it's the transition at the back I really want to find out. It will work, and I think I would call that pass a success. I don't know if who's watching these videos that was watching it from the very beginning, but thanks for coming along with me. This is a really, really fun project for me. And 
days off from work are few and far between sometimes and learn to embrace them. Nice. Let's give you a closer look at that one. You get an idea of that grain now, look at that. You can see the sunburst starting to come in. It's a little bit brighter in the middle, but we're going to say we're going to try and do a bit more of this transitioning. I'll say that's where the wire wool will come in. We're going to try and brighten this bit up here a little bit. And we're going to just make this transition a little bit more, or a little less slapdash. This is just the nature of the wood. It gets a little bit denser here, so it's harder to get that black out. So I might have to go in a little bit harder. Look at that grain, isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. Happy days. Not bad for a first attempt. Right, I'm going to leave that to dry. Next one you're going to see me do is the time lapse on the back, and that will come out really well. Next. first pass of this grains coming out really well a little bit of feathering in there is not too bad coming with some wire wool and this is nicely fully dry and we can see how the back is back's even nicer good isn't it? good grain is very very nice needs to cover this is all going to See, it's gradually soaking into the wood there. We'll go back over this again. Give it a couple of days to dry. Wire wool, more green, brighten up in the middle. More dark edges. Then we're on to the next stage, which is sanding, sealing, and then high gloss. There we go. It's green. Oh, I thought I was actually finished for the day, but we're going to have another go. We actually did a little test there just to see how this wood was drying. And this is just with a bit of wire wool. So it's very, very fine. More like hair than anything else. And uh, you can see how fine it is there. It's literally... Oh, 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 bleed. But there we go. But just seeing there, a little test piece I did there just off camera. And that takes that edge off, and this is what's going to make the brightness in the middle for me. So, I'm going to trust myself with another half an hour of fun. We're going to brighten up this teardrop shape here, where it's actually faded there. You can see from, this is about an hour and a half after the end of the last video. You can see it's really sunken back into the wood, but you can really pick out that edge now. It's got a nice sort of bluey colour, which is quite nice. So we're going to do a little bit of the wire brush in this sort of shape here. We're going to do a little bit feather this transition here to make it a little bit easier to see. And where these dark splodges are is where the grain has absorbed so much of the black 
I'm just going to see if we can get in there before we go back over it with a really thick uh, green, which I have plenty more of. I'm going to use this and we're going to mix it in with some more black. Great dye, absolutely brilliant dye. German, as I say, tiny little packages came like this. And there's still at least three quarters of that pack left. Very, very good value for money. So here we go. One more time lapse for the day. minutes something like that and you can now see that there's a definite burst happening I'm very happy with that I wasn't going to do this tonight but I'd say this has dried a lot better than I expected always be careful with the wire wool we don't want to breathe any of that shit in because it's fucking wire wool as you can tell I'm about to do some more dyeing and let's do this in real time as well why not I got some Bit of old cloth here. I have my dye. Now watch how green this goes. Focus on this area here first. Now I want actually. Well, got you. I see a little couple of inconsistencies. I'm just going to take that back a little bit. Amazing what you can get, just a tiny little bit of abrasion, that's all it is. Now, still got my green dye, a little bit thicker than it was earlier. Now we see some green. Being quite generous with this dye. Now. 
keep it going. Don't mind it being dark because it will dry and this will sink back in. But once again, as I said, the more layers you put in, the less opportunity it has to sink into the wood. And uh, it's all patience. As I said, there's only a small amount of experimentation that led me to this method, which is not the preferred method of a lot of people, I know. A lot of people tend to go dark on the outside with the same colour and gradually dilute using alcohol and things like that. However, this is a water-based uh, dye, not a solvent, so I prefer this myself. doesn't smell, can have it open, no need for a mask. Still don't want to get any on your fingers because it's... is a dye after all very nice and it's actually bringing them grains out on this side One more time around the outside. Lovely, 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 lovely. Now that looks a bit bursty, doesn't it? Very subtle. It has a nice little effect. I mean, hold it up now. I don't want to disturb it too much. Look at that. You can see the way that grain has been pulled out now. You can see that. This is where the uh, the burst is in the middle. And the more the light catches it. There's a good angle there. Look at that. Very, very nice. I'm happy with that. That's a classy looking good piece of wood now. So you see the difference in this and how it fades on the back. See? The back is lovely. I'm going to keep that as it is because we have this sort of almost like a black border around it. Where it's faded into this, into this rounded area before we hit the top. And it also makes it look like it's got a separate top on it now. I kind of like this wood grain. Shame this bit's going to be covered by a scratch plate. Do I need a scratch plate? Because there's no exposed routing for this. It's a drilled hole. Hmm. The thought. Tempted to see what it looks like with a scratch plate. No, that's for the next video. Right, so let's take a dry cloth and tamp this down. You see how much I'm pulling off now. See, not that much. That was a fresh cloth. So we do turn it again. See, we have a fresh piece here. That's how quickly this stuff dries. Well, it soaks in. It's still wet. The wood is clearly wet. But now the next one we do, we're going to go over it one more time with a slightly lighter sub, uh, solution of this. There's already some on here. We might even get away with using that and just some water. Yeah. A bit more. A tiny bit more.
Ready? Last time. And this is where we're going to leave it for the evening. And that's the most annoying ice cream van in Dublin going past. You can hear that in a couple of these videos. You never want to be recording with a live mic around here around 7 or 8 in the evening. Nice. It was worth dipping back into there. I just happened to come out and have a look, see what the, how it was drying. That, I'm happy with. You'll notice a little diver here. Don't need to get rid of using something else, probably paints. That's a nice fade we've got in there now. I am very happy with the way this has gone. I was a little worried because I am relatively new to this sort of thing. You see the sort of Iridescent blue, green, and the burst coming in the middle. It's very subtle, and I quite like that. That's a lot clearer than it was earlier on. Now we can say the next step is uh, nitro cellulose, perhaps. But before that, we need to sand and seal it. So we're going to be using a, a shellac. And uh, that will take a couple of days to dry. So stay tuned. Beautiful, isn't it? Zzz.